Mr. Kokesh, my name is John Patton. A couple of years ago, I got some DUIs for doing nothing but taking my medication as prescribed. Mm -mm -mm. I was not impaired at all, but like most people who can't afford a lawyer, I pled guilty in Gilbert Court. I was sent to jail and due to me having epilepsy, I was having seizure after seizure. One of the seizures resulted in me falling out of the top bunk directly onto my head. Despite intractable vomiting to the point I was throwing up pure blood, they would not take me to the hospital nor document with photos that I was throwing up pure blood. I was given two Tylenol and sent back to my cell. Excuse me. It, it is hard to read something like this without... Uh, a, a deep empathy being invoked for the victim of this kind of government brutality. We have to get government, at, well, we have to get rid of government, obviously, but we have to get government out of justice services. It, it, it is so unjust. It is, it is insane. I finally got out and saw the judge for sentencing. I self-surrendered and the judge agreed that due to my medical conditions, I was to be housed in the infirmary. I brought my medication as directed, but when I got to the jail, I was told the judge doesn't tell the sheriff how to run his jail and was not put in the infirmary. While there, they lost my medication and did not give me the other medication I bought prescribed. So I was again having seizures. The last time I had a warrant that I wasn't even aware of, again in jail with no medical attention, I was found down in my cell with no pulse or respirations. If you're going to trust somebody to lock someone up because they're dangerous, and by the way, this is just fucking insane. The government locks people up who are not dangerous all the time, which is criminal. And of course, we can't hold government accountable by doing anything than with, other than withdrawing our support. But if you're going to ask someone to lock someone up because, because they're dangerous, you have to make sure that they're taking responsibility for the health and well-being of these people. And, and how many stories are there like this that you don't even hear about? People who die in custody, people who suffer needlessly in jail and prisons all over America. The corrections officer gave me CPR, fracturing two ribs in the process, qu parentheses, which I am not complaining about as he saved my life. But believe it or not, after I was revived, I was not taken to the hospital. Mm. So now the other TD two DUIs I have, I'm afraid to even show up and fight them because I am very literally afraid for my life. I have zero money or collateral to get bonded out, so I live in absolute terror, only leaving my trailer to go to the doctor or vet, or to, to go to the doctor or get groceries for my son and I. I have been raising my son alone for the past nine years on social security disability. I went from making $80,000 a year to less than $17,000 a year after sustaining two separate traumatic brain injuries. I don't know what to do. I just know what is happening isn't right. I am 45 years old, and before this, I've never had anything but simple traffic citations, nothing criminal. I can't leave my son. He has major depression, as I do, and I am at the end of my rope. So I thought I would contact you as I have seen the injustice that has happened to you. I am a simple and peaceful man, Adam. I just want to live my life. I forgot to mention that the state of Arizona required me to get a form filled out from my neurologist stating that if he thinks I am capable of driving, and he said, yes, I am even taking the medication. This was turned in shortly before I got any DUIs because I was pulled over for speeding. And during the stop, I was asked if I take any prescribed medication. I was honored and answered yes. I'm sorry, uh, John, but there's your first mistake, sir. Don't answer questions to the government that you don't have to. Especially not questions like this. E even at a traffic stop, you at least got to ask, am I legally required? Am I legally obligated to answer this question? Oh my gosh. Even though he did not do a field sobriety test because he saw no impairment, he reported to DMV that I shouldn't be driving. Then the getting pulled over and charged with DUI started. Anyways, help if you can in any way. I truly appreciate what you have done 
for our country and what you continue to do for it regards John Patton. Now, John, I would like to tell you to stand and fight and vote for me in 2020, but that would be very dishonest of me to give you advice that I wouldn't be taking myself. If I was in your situation, I would leave the country. I would find a way to do it quietly so that you can keep receiving your social security benefits. And in case those stop, I would do the best that I could to find a way to make money on the internet. I tell people this all the time, by the way, because you can live very frugally and comfortably on very little money and you can make money very efficiently sitting in front of your computer doing stuff for people a, th a thousand different ways, a million different ways. There's no reason for you to be physically in the United States when you are set up in such a vulnerable position to be such a victim of government. John, your life and your son's life are at risk by staying in the United States. Now, I should uh, put a little caveat on that, not just staying in the United States, but driving in the United States. Uh, being in a place where the government knows where you are in the United States. Living in a state where if you are discovered by the government, those warrants could lead to your extradition to the jurisdiction where they have been written. So there may be a way if you decide if you want to stay in the U.S., that you can go completely off-grid and be safe that way. Don't show up to court for these DUIs. Please, John, don't do it. You're putting your life in the government's very evil, clumsy, dangerous hands. It would be irresponsible for your son for you to put yourself in that situation. You don't have to go far. You'd be a lot safer in Mexico. Talk to Jeff Berwick, the dollar vigilante. He helps people leave the country all the time. There are a lot of other services, if you don't want his specifically. Find a way to get out of the country and live safe. That's the best I can do for you, John. And that's what I would be doing if I was in your situation. I'm very sorry to hear about the injustices that you have faced and the challenges that you continue to face. Sometimes it's better to live to fight another day. And if you think that you can't be a part of the freedom movement from anywhere in the world with an internet connection, you're wrong. For someone with your level of awareness and conscientiousness, the world still needs you and your input. And we are gonna lose that if the American government kills you by forcibly separating you from your life-saving medication. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions including DTube, and you can find that through steamit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.